distinguished members of the High Level Panel for the Ethiopia Peace Process, Your Excellency, former President Uhuru Kenyatta, Republic of Kenya, and Your Excellency, Dr. Mulide Lampo Nuka, former Deputy President of South Africa, and a member of the African Union Alliance Panel of Wives, Dr. Naledi Pando, Honorable Minister of International Relations and Cooperation of the Republic of South Africa, representatives of the Federal Democratic Republic of Ethiopia, and the Tigray People's Liberation Front. International observers accompanying the process, the, Interna the Intergovernmental Authority on Development, IGAD, the United Nations, and the United States of America, ladies and gentlemen, distinguished colleagues, good afternoon. Let me, on behalf of the Chairperson of the African Union Commission, His Excellency Musa Faki Muhammad, welcome you to this historic signing ceremony of the Permanent Cessation of Hostilities Agreement between the Federal Democratic Republic of Ethiopia and the Tigray People's Liberation Front. Excellencies, this ceremony is a demonstration of the commitment of both parties to come together to address common peace and security priorities for the benefit of the people of Ethiopia. It is a culmination of two years of the African Union's efforts to support the restoration of stability in Ethiopia and the broader Horn of Africa. Excellencies, the AU commends the party's efforts and commitment to creating a conducive environment for finding lasting solutions to the country's political challenges. The signing of this agreement is an integral step towards this end. We must seize this broader continental momentum to secure peace for the people of Ethiopia. We wish to congratulate the parties and the panel for your leadership and tenacity in maintaining the constructive engagement even in the face of difficult discussions. We further thank our partners for their continued support of the AU-led process and count on your support for the implementation of this agreement. As the AU, we remain committed to accompanying Ethiopia and its people on its path towards peace, development, and prosperity. Let me at this juncture humbly, humbly invite His Excellency, former President Ulisogon Obasanjo, the AU High Representative for the Horn of Africa, for his opening statement during this signing ceremony. President Obasanjo, please. Thank you, Director. My dear brother, former president of Kenya, Uru Kenyatta. My dear sister and former deputy president of South Africa, Osile Lambo Nkuka. Representative of our gracious host, the government and the people of South Africa, the minister of international relations and cooperation, representatives of the Federal Republic of Ethiopia, representatives of the Tigray People's Liberation Front and the people of the Tigray region, our distinguished partners and observers in this process, the United Nations, IGAD, and the United States, esteemed colleagues from the African Union, members of the media, ladies and gentlemen. Today marks two years less one day since violence and war broke out in the northern Ethiopian region of Tigray. Over this period, the African Union has been persistent in seeking ways and means of bringing about peace, security and stability in Ethiopia and ensuring that the development and progress of Ethiopia as a wholesome and an inclusive society will not be truncated. Fourteen months ago, the AU Commission Chairperson, Ambassador of Musafaki Mohammed, 
appointed me as High Representative for the Horn of Africa to promote peace, security, and stability. Over the last 14 years, 14 months, I consulted regional leaders and stakeholders within Ethiopia, within other IGAD member states, within Africa, and with development partners outside Africa. In Ethiopia itself, I visited some regions several times, while I visited Tigray region eight times. Only last month, and for the purpose of the exercise that has brought us here, the chairperson of the AU Commission appointed my brother, President Uhuru Kenyatta, and my sister, the Deputy President of, or the former Deputy President of South Africa, to join me in moving the process forward. Today is the beginning of a new dawn for Ethiopia, for the Horn of Africa, and indeed for Africa as a whole. Let me hasten to thank God for this new dawn. We have seen in practice and actualization what we have tried to achieve for ourselves over the years. And that is African solution for African problems. We also see in today's peace agreement signing exercise the implementation of Agenda 2063 which embodies silencing the gun in Africa. The two, part, the two parties in the Ethiopian conflict have formally agreed to the cessation of hostilities as well as to systematic, orderly, smooth and coordinated disarmament restoration of law and order, restoration of services, unhindered access to humanitarian supplies, protection of civilians, especially women, children, and other vulnerable groups, among other areas of agreement. The agreement also takes care of assurance of security for all concerned within and outside Ethiopia, monitoring, supervising, verification of implementation will be carried out by the AU High Level Panel. For what you have achieved delegates from both sides, working together among yourselves, we salute you, we commend you, and we congratulate you. Let me say <coughs> to those facilitators, this moment is not the end of peace process, but the beginning of it. Implementation of the peace agreements, implementation of the peace agreement signed today is critical to the success of the process. On behalf of the AU, the panel members, the delegates, the observers, and the experts that have been around. I express our deep appreciation to President Cyril Ramaphosa and the government of South Africa 
for being a wonderful host and for such a splendid arrangement made for the success of these talks. The three observers here, the UN, the IGAD, and the US, as well as others who are not rep represented here, are all very much appreciated. In this regard, we particularly thank the Africa Development Bank and the European Union for their financial support and the United Nations for their logistical support over the last 14 months. I must not forget to thank the staff of the Africa Union Commission, particularly those in the Department of Political Affairs and security led by the Commissioner and by the Bankoli Adeoye with the valuable support of Director Sajo Ba for their commitment and dedication to duty. Let me emphasize that the eyes of the world will now shift from the talks to the implementation leaders on both sides have supported the delegates to achieve what has been achieved. Finally, let me once again congratulate all the delegates. Well done. You have made all Ethiopians at home and abroad winners in this agreement. Please positively move on, move up, and move forward, leaving the past behind. Ethiopia is a great nation and shall continue to be a great nation and proud to all Africans. My brother says, I thank you and God bless you all. Thank you uh, very much, uh, Baba, Excellency President of Basanjo. At this point, it gives me the honor to invite the head of delegation of the Federal Democratic Republic of Utopia, my brother, His Excellency Ambassador Redwan Hussein Rameto. Ambassador Redwan, please. Thank you very much. Dear Excellencies, dear friends, on behalf of the participants from the Ethiopian government in these peace talks, I would like to express our heartfelt gratitude to the African High Level Panel led by His Excellency, former President Olise Basanjo, the AU High Representative for the Horn of Africa, His Excellency, former President of Kenya, President of Kenyatta, and Her Excellency, Deputy former Deputy President of South Africa, Dr. Fumzili, President of South Africa and AU member panel of the WISE. We've benefited from your immense leadership, experience and wisdom over the course of these talks and in helping us get to South Africa. In these talks, you offered your guidance and support to the two sides. We are proud that you've shown the world the reservoir of wisdom in our continent and our capacity to resolve our problems. We are pleased that you have accepted to support the implementation of the agreement we've signed today. Your work stated with the initiative of the chairperson of the African Union Commission, His Excellency Mr. Musa Faki Mohammed. We applaud his vision and leadership. Commissioner Bankole Adoe, Dr. Alhaj Sajoba, and their colleagues deserve our appreciation for their tireless work. Our deep appreciation goes also to His Excellency President Sri Ramaphosa, the President of the Republic of South Africa, and indeed to the people of the Republic of South Africa for their generous hospitality. We are grateful to His Excellency Dr. Nadeli Pander, 
South Africa's Minister of Department of International Relations and Cooperation for the excellent facilities she put at the disposal of the talks. We are indebted to all her colleagues for putting an extra house to ensure the conditions are for the peace talks to continue and reach these positive conclusions. We thank the observers, Dr. Wakina Gaweyo, the Secretary General of IGAD, Sana Tete, the Special Envoy for the Secretary General of the United Nations for the Horn of Africa, and Ambassador Mike Hammer, the U.S. Special Envoy for the Horn of Africa, for accompanying and supporting these peace talks. We shall count on their continued support to Ethiopia to quickly move towards rebuilding communities affected by this conflict. The level of destruction is immense, and thus, that is are massive. We thank our brothers from the other side also for their constructive engagement to allow the country to put this tragic period of conflict behind us. It is now for all of us to honor this agreement. We must be true to the letter and the spirit of this agreement. The people of Ethiopia expected more than the text of this agreement. They demand peace and harmony. They desire development. They have charted a promising and bright future. The government of this part will take the government on its part will take various proactive measures to nurture democracy and inclusive development in the country. Our democratic institutions have started delivering tangible progress. We will continue the institutional strengthening process. We have chartered an inclusive national dialogue process to put Ethiopia on a level stronger foundation. In the course of this conflict, we have also witnessed a complicated picture of the relations with various foreign actors. Our sisters and brothers from Africa remain true to their principal distance that Ethiopians must own and resolve their differences. They advised and encouraged us to reach this day. We hope others will learn that such a generous and firm direction is the one to take in dealing with such a delicate situation. Friends of Ethiopia deserve also our special thanks. It is now time to revitalize our relations with our partners and put them on a solid footing based on principles of international law governing international relations. We look forward to exploring ways of reinvigorating our ties with all our partners. We thank you all for your patience and support of Ethiopia. And I invite you to visit us and admire the wonders of our country while we keep on joining hands for our future betterment and enjoy also our hospitality of our people. I thank you very much. Thank you very much, my brother, Ambassador Redwell. At this point, it's an opportunity to also call on my other brother, the head of delegation for the Tigray People's Liberation Front, Mr. Getashu Reda. Getashu. Thank you, <coughs> Excellency, uh, Mr. Olusegun Obasanjo, former President of the Republic of Nigeria and uh, Chair of the AU High Level Panel. Uh, His Excellency, Oguru Kenata, uh, former President of the Republic of Kenya. Her Excellency, uh, Madam Fuzuli Mulambo, former Deputy President of South Africa. Uh, Her Excellency, Dr. Pando, Minister of uh, International Cooperation and Foreign Affairs of South Africa. Uh, uh, excellencies, partners, brothers and sisters. Uh, I would like to thank uh, the AU and the AU High Level Panel for uh, having conducted a successful negotiation uh, the last 10 days. Obviously, uh, the last 10 days were not a particularly exciting experience in the sense that there was so much haggling over what would otherwise be considered trivial issues. Uh, but ultimately, the fact that we have reached a point where we have now signed an agreement uh, speaks volumes about the readiness on the part of uh, the two sides to lay the past behind them and to, to, to chart a new path of peace level. Making peace obviously has proved more difficult and more intractable and elusive than 
presiding over the killing and destruction, the killing of women and children and destruction of property. The war in our part of the country, the last two years, has claimed the lives of hundreds of thousands of people and has turned Ethiopia once in the cusp of great economic progress into a bad parody of itself and caused tremendous suffering to the people of Tibet. Our people have been killed not only through bullets but also for lack of food and medicine. Our children do not go to schools. Our hospitals are not functioning because of the war. We have always felt this war was imposed on us and we have always been ready to do everything in our power to stop this war. Now that we are here to sign an agreement, uh, to at least explore the opportunity uh, to see if we can make this, and it is still with, it is with a reach, uh, it will come as a relief not only to the people of Tigray, but also to the entire Ethiopian population. And I hope, it's my hope and expectation that the two parties will continue to honor their commitment and redouble their efforts to make sure that the agreement they have signed is implemented and, and, and in a manner that satisfies the interest of our people. As you know, the humanitarian crisis has been particularly dire and the fight in the last 70 days has claimed for more, more lives as we speak, as we speak as we are here ready to sign an agreement, thousands of uh, combatants from both sides, as well as civilians, are uh, losing their lives. So it is incumbent upon us not only to sign this agreement, but also to make sure that it's immediately implemented and the follow-up activities that are required to make sure such an agreement is implemented to the fullest extent possible are carried so in advance. And on our part, we are ready to do everything in our capacity to expedite the implementation of the, this agreement. And it's our hope and expectation that our brothers from Addis Ababa will do the same. Uh, obviously, like I said, uh, we cannot solve our problems where there, when there is too much testosterone uh, in the room. Obviously, some of you have been complaining that the delegates from both sides uh, have little in the way of feminine presence. And people advise us that probably the presence of women would have made a difference as far as making peace uh, is concerned. So when there is too much testosterone and when there is too much willingness on the part of the two sides to fight till the hell freeze over, it is the children and the women who find themselves at the receiving end of the suffering. And unfortunately, it's unfortunate. Uh, for myself and my comrades here who have once served in the same government, it took traveling all the way to South Africa, I'm not complaining uh, that I traveled to South Africa, I have always loved being in South Africa, but it is quite tragic. It took a haggling of several months for us to come together and explore an opportunity for peace. Now that uh, Chief Obasanjo, uh, President Kenata, and immense, as Rayvan has pointed out, and the destruction in Tigray has been even more particularly painful concessions because addressing the pains of our people is far more important than the kinds of concessions we have made. Yes, we have made concessions because we have to build trust and we have to make sure that every one of us builds on that trust. But like uh, President Obasanjo clearly pointed out, to sign an agreement is one thing, but to implement it is entirely different. And our focus should be on implementing it, not because uh, we are wary of fighting, but rather because our, our people deserve every ounce of it. Uh, it's our hope and expectation that both sides Will, 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 will remain faithful to the commitments they have entered. And it's also our hope and expectation that the verification and monitoring mechanism we are going to put in place will, will be an ironclad one and the international community needs to throw its weight behind such a process so that 
we can avoid a relapse into the kind of uh, uh, traditional proclivity to resolve differences by shooting at each other. So I hope uh, our effort to silence the guns would be followed through in earnest, and our people deserve all the peace in the world, and we need to rebuild communities which have already been shattered as a result of such a bloody war that has continued for the last two years and still continues. I know there are spoilers from, from, from nearby, from inside our ranks, from the neighborhood, and we also know they would not stop at nothing to sabotage our peacemaking efforts, and it is only through our collective resolve that we can hold these spoilers in check, whether they are from the entire neighborhood or from within our ranks. We have to tell them that there is no substitute for peace, that our people's people deserve all the peace in the world. All our mothers and sisters and our children deserve all the peace in the world. And for us, we are ready to do everything to make sure that no effort on the part of spoilers would, would set us back uh, on our commitment for peace. Uh, our decision to silence the guns should also serve as a basis for a continued political engagement that will help us resolve uh, overarching political problems that have uh, bedeviled the nation. And I know as long as we have this pause, as long as we uh, continue to uh, renew our commitments for peace, we still can find it within our hearts to, to mend fence and to resolve political differences. And ultimately, uh, it is only through political dialogue that problems of political nature can be resolved, and that commitment should always be there. Uh, last but not least, I would like to thank once again all the people who have been involved in making this happen. More importantly, the high-level panel has been very instrumental, and I would also like to, to, to thank uh, Hannah Tete, Workna Gawayo, and Mike Hammer for uh, taking all the pain to bear with us while we are haggling among us each other, not to solve our own problems. Uh, hopefully, they will remain uh, engaged in the entire process, uh, and we have every confidence in the, in the panel and in the African Union uh, and their commitment to carry through their, their, their responsibilities uh, and, of course, to make sure that our, our uh, agreement which we are signing today becomes implemented and to the fullest uh, extent possible. Uh, let's take this opportunity to once again recommit, rededicate our, ourselves to rebuilding our communities and to seek political and peaceful solutions to the problems that uh, our communities face. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Etasio. At this point, I would like to call on the uh, representative of the observers, uh, my sister, uh, Excellency, the UN Special Envoy for the Horn of Africa, Madame Anna Tete. Madame Anna, please.
Your Excellency is the representatives of the Federal Democratic Republic of Ethiopia. Gentlemen representatives of the TPLF from the Tigray region. Thank you very much for the opportunity to make a statement on behalf of the observers to the Ethiopia peace process. The Executive Secretary of IGAD, Dr. Wakeme Gabriel, the Special Envoy of the United States to the Horn of Africa, Ambassador Mike Hammer, and myself, the UN Special Envoy to the Horn of Africa. And perhaps Your Excellency is on a lighter note, I can bring down the testosterone. The last few days have been quite intense. And clearly, the path to arriving at this agreement has not been an easy one to tread. We wish to congratulate both delegations for their willingness to listen to each other and make the necessary important decisions to address each other's key concerns for the benefit of all of Ethiopia. This, however, is just the beginning of this journey. And implementation will require greater collaboration and actions to build confidence to return your beautiful and great country to peace. We are ready to continue to work with you in support of this effort. We want to express our sincere appreciation to His Excellency President Olusegun Basanjo and members of the AU High Level Mediation Panel, President Uru Kenyatta and Deputy President from Malambo and Guka, for deploying your wisdom, your experience, and your patience in facilitating this process to assist the two delegations to arrive at this outcome. We also wish to thank the chairperson of the African Union Commission, Musa Faki Mohamed, for his leadership of the African Union Commission in support of this process. We must also express our great appreciation to His Excellency President Cyril Ramaphosa, President of the Republic of South Africa, Her Excellency the Honorable Minister of International Relations and Cooperation, and the Department of International Relations and Cooperation for their facilitation of this meeting and for their generous support to this process. This is an opportunity to chart a new course. The young men and women who have been mobilized to fight will now have the chance to return to their homes and their families. They will not have to live with the fear that this day could be their last. And their families will bless you for creating the conditions for them to be with their children. Not because they are not patriotic or ready to support their cause, but because life is a gift to be cherished and children are a gift to be cherished. We as observers commit to support the implementation of this agreement, the humanitarian response in the first instance, and we are also ready to accompany this process of providing support and assistance in all three regions of northern Ethiopia, Afa, Amhara, and Tigray, that have been affected by the conflict, to help people rebuild their lives. It is time for the schools to reopen and hospitals to be supplied to provide medical treatment and relief, and also prepare to have commercial activity resume in earnest to strengthen and grow the economy. This is the time for the international community to come together and support Ethiopia in its efforts to repair and replace damaged infrastructure and rebuild and restore what has been lost. And we should be ready to make our contributions to this process. And finally, we would wish to thank the two delegations for the willingness to come to this agreement. And we commit to support the federal government and the regions affected as best as we can. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Thank you. Thank you very much. At this point, I have the singular honor to invite uh, Excellency Dr. Nalit Dipanda, Minister of International Relations and Cooperation of the Republic of South Africa, Dr. Panda. Your Excellency, Chair of the Facilitation Panel, former President of Asanjo, Your Excellencies, former President of Kenya, President of 
Uhuru Kenyatta and former Deputy President of South Africa, former Deputy President Pumzile Mlambu Mluka, members of delegations of the Federal Government of Ethiopia and those of the Tigray People's Liberation Front, officials from the African Union, senior officials from the Department of International Relations and Cooperation, distinguished observers, members of the media, I am the most relieved person in this room. When the African Union approached our office on the possibility of South Africa serving as host to a round of peace talks, I must admit I was initially extremely reluctant and my response to the African Union was, hmm, I have to think about it. And after I've thought about it, I have to approach President Ramaphosa. When I spoke to President Ramaphosa, he said, of course, Minister, we cannot decline. It is a duty that South Africa must assume and undertake, right up to the logical conclusion of peace. So, colleagues have to thank President Ramaphosa because I was very nervous. <laughs> Allow me to welcome, on behalf of the people and the government of South Africa, the successful negotiation of this cessation of hostilities agreement between the federal government of Ethiopia and the Tigray People's Liberation Front. We extend our congratulations to the leaders on both sides. For us, this agreement signals a commitment to ending the use of force to settle differences and disputes and confirms the correctness of our own country's principled policy position that political differences are best resolved through meaningful dialogue and diplomacy. This agreement also underscores the importance that the leaders on both sides have attached to the lives of their people, including to the fighting forces, to their families, to women in their communities, as well as to the suffering children of war. The message that comes out of these talks is clear. There are no winners in war, and wars do not solve problems. Invariably, the underlying reasons for conflict will persist unless they are resolved through dialogue. The use of force serves to destroy lives, livelihoods, infrastructure, and to merely prolong human suffering. This is why, as South Africa, we've always urged the African Union that as a continent, we must give much more focused attention to preventative interventions, structures, and mechanisms. Peace building is much more difficult than waging a war. The real heroes are those who work toward building peace and sustaining it. We therefore humbly call on the leaders of both sides to continue to work toward maintaining this peace through implementing the agreement in full as they have committed to do in front of us. The engagement to build stability to sustain peace must continue in Ethiopia and lead to the securing of an enduring peace. We are honored as South Africa to have been the host for these talks and we are keen to provide further support to the African Union working closely with the facilitation team to ensure that peace is indeed maintained in our sister country, Ethiopia. It is absolutely imperative that we thank 
the facilitators and the observers for the hard work that has been undertaken. We thank His Excellency President Olusegun Obasanjo, His Excellency former President Uhuru Kenyatta, and Her Excellency former Deputy President Pumzile Mlambu Unuka. We also thank colleagues of the African Union Commission and all the observers as well as the resource personnel who have helped steer the talks. It is our hope as the people and government of South Africa that we are very soon going to be enjoying a celebration with the people of Ethiopia and indeed with all the people of Africa because this agreement offers the hope that it is possible that as Africans we can silence the guns throughout the continent. Our president, President Ramaphosa, has directed me to congratulate all of you and to confirm his government and our country's readiness to continue playing any positive role that you may wish us to play. We are heartily encouraged by this example and we are indeed really privileged and honored that this first sign that our path, our walk to silencing the guns is a, probably a successful one. We are absolutely privileged that that path and walk has begun here in South Africa. I thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Minister. Excellencies, uh, President Basanjo, President Uru Kenyatta, Madam Kumzile, this brings us to one of the most important and critical points in today's uh, signing ceremony. The parties, Excellencies, have agreed to issue a joint statement and as a demonstration of their commitment and the bonds that bind them as brothers and sisters is a two-page document with 12 paragraphs they have divided them evenly and will have Ambassador Redwan, Rametro, read the first part of the joint statement and that will be followed by Mr. Gitashu Reda, which will bring us to the signing ceremony. So without further ado, I would like to call on Ambassador Redwan for the first part of the joint statement between the government of the Federal Democratic Republic of Ethiopia and the Tigray People's Liberation Front. Ambassador, over to you, please. Thank you, Dr. Bach. In fact, I often get a job in the first page, but uh, he delegated me to begin, so I will have to begin reading. Joint statement between the government of the Federal Democratic Republic of Ethiopia and the Tigray People's Liberation Front, TPLF. As per Article 3 of the Agreement for Lasting Peace and Permanent Cessation of Hostilities, the representatives of the government of the Federal Democratic Republic of Ethiopia and the TPLA have agreed to announce to the people of Ethiopia and the rest of the world that after 10 days of intensive negotiations have concluded a peace agreement. Second, we've agreed to permanently silence the guns and end the two years of conflict in northern Ethiopia. Three, the conflict has brought a tragic degree of loss of lives and livelihoods, and it is in the interest of the entire people of Ethiopia to leave the chapter of conflict behind and live in peace and harmony. Fourth, it is fundamental that we reaffirm our commitment to safeguarding the sovereignty and territorial integrity of Ethiopia and to upholding the constitution of the Federal Democratic Republic of Ethiopia. Thus, Ethiopia has only one national defense force. We've also agreed on the detailed program of disarmament, demobilization, and reintegration for the TPLF combatants, taking into account the security situation on the ground. Fifth, we've agreed that the government of Ethiopia will further enhance its collaboration with humanitarian agencies 
to continue expediting aid to all those in need of assistance. Six, we've agreed to implement transitional measures that include the restoration of constitutional order in Tigray region, a framework for the settlement of political difference, and a transitional justice policy framework to ensure accountability through reconciliation and healing. Thank you very much, Ambassador Rickman. Uh, Mr. Kitacho. Seven, to start implementing these undertakings without delay, we have agreed to stop all forms of conflicts and hostile propaganda. We only make statements to support the expeditious implementation of the agreement. We are Ethiopians in the country and abroad to support this agreement, stop voices of division and hate, and mobilize their resources for economic recovery and rehabilitation of social bonds. Eighth, the government of Ethiopia will continue the efforts to restore public services and rebuild the infrastructures of communities affected by the conflict. The students must go to school, farmers and pastoralists to their fields, and public servants to their offices. The agreement requires the support of the public for its smooth implementation. This is a new and hopeful chapter in the history of the country. Nine, we express our gratitude to all actors contributing to the success of this endeavor, in particular, the African Union Commission Chairperson, the African High Level Panel led by His Excellency Former President Olusha Basanjo, supported by His Excellency Former President Uru Kenyatta, and Her Excellency Dr. Fumuzile Belambo, former Deputy President of the Republic of South Africa. We thank the Chairperson of the African Union Commission, His Excellency Mr. Musa Fakim Muhammad, Commissioner Bankoli Adoui, and his colleagues for their tireless work during the stops. We rely on their continued support as we implement the agreement. Ten, we thank His Excellency President Cyril Ramaphosa, the President of the Republic of South Africa, and Her Excellency Dr. Naledi Pando, the Minister for the Department of International Relations and Cooperation of South Africa, for the excellent facilities they put at the disposal of these talks and their words of encouragement to the parties who the successful results. We are indebted for the hospitality accorded to us by the people and government of the Republic of South Africa. Eleven, we are grateful to the people of Ethiopia for encouraging these talks and patiently waiting for the outcome. We are confident that they will embrace the results of these talks and ensure their timely implementation. Twelve, finally, we are confident that friends of Ethiopia and members of the diplomatic community will lend their support in rebuilding infrastructure in affected communities and the economic recovery of the country. We call on all types of media outlets to support peace, reconciliation, unity, and prosperity in Ethiopia. Jointly de delivered at Pretoria, the Republic of South Africa, 2nd November 2022. Thank you very much, Ambassador Redwan and Akitashu. Excellencies, with your permission and that of the Minister, may we give them a round of applause. <laughs> Excellencies, at this point, we now have the formal signing ceremony. So we'll bring the table to the front, and I would like to invite Mr. Gitashu Reda and Ambassador Redwan, if they can come to the table for the uh, signing of this very important peace agreement.
document of the agreement and they will be distributed as follows. Two copies, uh, one copy each will be given to the representative of the Tigray People's Liberation Front. Another copy will be given to the representative of the federal government of the Democratic Republic of Ethiopia. can do that now. Another copy will be given to His Excellency President Olusegun Obasanjo, the High Representative for the Horn of Africa and the Chair of the Panel. Another copy will be given to His Excellency Dr. Naledi Pando, the Minister of International Cooperation for the Republic of South Africa. And then the final and fifth copy I will keep I'll have to take this back to my bosses in Addis, to the chairperson of the African Union Commission. Thank you very much, Excellencies. At this point, Excellencies, we would also like to invite uh, both Ambassador Redwan and Mr. Ketasu to initial the joint statement that they read out. So if you can initial the joint statement, we'll appreciate that. Thank you. We'll start with Ketasu and you go to Ambassador Redwan. Thank you very much. A copy of that statement will also be submitted to President Obasanjo and the panel and the two delegations will get uh, identical copies of the same document. Excellencies, at this point, this brings us to the session of, with the media and what we have agreed with the uh, Department of International Relations and Cooperation. This particular session will be moderated by their Director of Communication, Mr. Clayson. And what we agreed was the questions will be exclusively directed to the panel and not the delegations. And I think we'll encourage Mr. Clayson to make sure that all questions are directed to the panel and Dr. Naledi Pando, but not the delegations. Over to you, Mr. Clayson. Thank you very, thank you very much, uh, Excellencies. So we do three questions. Mongoena, uh, please start. There's a roving microphone there, Just introduce yourself okay. first. My name is Sophie Mugwena from the South African Broadcasting Corporation. My question relates to women. I see men in ties and suits, no woman. One thing that the UN spoke about is that you will not have a lasting solution in terms of peace if you exclude the majority of the population and in this case you are talking about women. Why? And lastly, for peace to hold, you have to monitor and ensure that uh, those who have a hand in fueling the conflict are on board. What's going to happen to Eritrea that's being accused of meddling in the affairs of Ethiopia? And the Ethiopian government also saying that there are international forces that are meddling in Ethiopia's affairs. Thank you. Khalita? Thank you very much for the opportunity. My name is Conita Hunter from News24 in South Africa. There has been a description of these talks today as being very tense over the past few days. 
if you can just give us an indication of what were some of the sticking points that threatened uh, these talks from collapsing. And secondly, as part of this agreement, will the federal government reverse its decision to de uh, designate TPLF as a terror group? If um, any one of the members of the panel can please shed light on that. Thank you very much. Let's go to Reuters. Uh, that will be the last question for this round. There's a microphone right there. Tim Cox from Reuters. Um, my understanding of this agreement is that you've agreed to stop shooting each other, but obviously there's a lot of questions about what else uh, needs to be agreed upon. And I wondered if you could, uh, if either delegation could talk about what uh, still needs to be agreed and whether any progress has been made on that before you have a kind of full blown political settlement. Thank you. Um, the first question is about women, um, probably as part of delegates, um, and how much is the interest of women and children just read part of Article 4, which talks of protection of civilians. The party shall protect the human rights of the civilian population and commit to holding applicable international humanitarian law instruments to which Ethiopia is party. The party shall, in particular, condemn any act of sexual and gender-based violence, any act of violence against children, girls, women, and the elderly, including recruitment and conscription of child soldiers and support for family reunification. Um, although uh, I'm, of course, with the panel, we see we have a distinguished lady, not to we have a lady who was a deputy president of this great country, but is also a member of the panel of wife in the AU. And um, our contribution into the content, particularly protection for women and children and the vulnerable uh, was tremendous. Um, as far as delegation uh, is concerned, I will not be able to say anything about that. The other question, again, I remember is that, look, what were the sticky points um, present I think you better than that, and, um, and then maybe you come up and say a little bit about women and children. And um, President Uhuru, you also talk a little bit about the, what goes on in each other. It's part of the question. I thank you, President. Um, that came out uh, or that were read out are only uh, very general remarks about what the document contains. But I think the two parties put in a lot of effort, especially when it came to laying out the principles and the objectives of uh, this agreement. It goes into quite a bit of detail as to how um, disarmament will happen. It 
also talks a lot about humanitarian access, resumption of services throughout the country or throughout the affected areas. It talks about um, the process of uh, reintegrating the, uh, the, 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 the Tigrayan region into the federal government. It talks about the return to constitutional order. It talks about um, the fact that disputes will be uh, resolved politically and uh, not through uh, the guns anymore. It goes further and, 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 and talks about uh, processes and how women and children and civilians uh, would be treated. But as has been stated, th this is not all that needs to be done. We've gone through, for example, um, how this agreement shall be monitored and verified. The devil will be in the implementation. But it is our strong belief that from the commitment that we have seen from the two parties, they will deliver. And we, as the panel, plus our partners, stand ready to assist and will be part of the verification and monitoring process. The agreement, because it is between two parties, talks about their commitment to resolving the problems of Ethiopia as Ethiopians and the fact that no party will engage in uh, activities that are detrimental to the other. It talks about the ENDF being the only national army of Ethiopia and its duty and responsibility to safeguard the territorial integrity of Ethiopia. So that again lays out quite clearly that this is an Ethiopian problem to be resolved by Ethiopians. So we, we still have a lot of work to do in terms of beginning the political process. But the most important thing is the unwritten. And the unwritten is the building of trust and confidences between all parties concerned and the recognition that the solution to the problems of Ethiopia lie in the hands of the people of Ethiopia. We are here to assist them in that process. And all we can ask and call for is any destructive force from whatever part that seeks to destabilize this process, either from within or from without, should take note that the people of Ethiopia now desire peace and now desire to resolve their internal issues through peaceful means. So I think that is what I want to say, Madam Pumzile. I don't know if you'd like to add something. Sorry? Yes, thank you. But I would just like to say that uh, the main thing about this agreement is the silencing of guns. And it is also about ensuring that we stop the killing. We were very much aware throughout the negotiations about the importance of stopping the killing. And this is what we are hoping for as we announce this uh, agreement. Also, uh, Ethiopia is a complex country. These two parties are not the only two groups that are relevant for peace to happen in Ethiopia. So we are entrusting them with the responsibility of going back home to socialize this agreement, to make it acceptable, to ensure that many more people embrace and accept this agreement. We know that they cannot convince every single Ethiopian, so they will learn to work with others who may have some concerns about this agreement and that is why the support of the international community and everyone else who wish peace for Ethiopia 
is going to continue to be important. We need to accompany them for them to fulfill their task as best as possible. On the issue of uh, women, indeed, I think we have committed to each other on this side as the panelists that will ensure that we always have women in our teams as we move forward and nudged the colleagues on both sides to do the same. One of the parties already promised me that uh, in the next time we meet, we will see uh, suits and skirts. And I hope that it's not going to be difficult to make sure that both parties will do the same, because that is important. Lasting peace, as it has been shown, comes when there is inclusion and diversity. And this piece is not going to be an exception. Thank you. Excellency President Ubasanyo, President Uru Kenyatta, this brings us to the end of the engagement with the media. I would also like, I think, once again, on behalf of the Chair of the Commission, to ex extend our sincere gratitude to you, but more importantly also to Dr. Naledi Pando and the government and people of South Africa for the warm hospitality and the facilities that they put at our disposal. The final uh, order of business that we we'll want to do now, I would like to invite Ambassador Redmond and Getasu to join the panel here for a group photo. And after that, I would like to invite their delegations, all of them, to join for a bigger family photo. So we'll start with uh, Getasu and Ambassador Redmond to join the panel here, and uh, Dr. Naledi Pando. And they will be followed by members of their team. And I would also like to invite the three observers, Dr. Wokne, uh, Madam Tete, and Mike to subsequently join the, the, the group photo. Excellencies, may I crave your indulgence and ask if you could come in front of the tables? Um, I think that would be. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. May I now invite the other members of the delegations to join. General Sargan, Dr. Gideon, please.
Thank you very much. May I now humbly also uh, request the We are done with the group photo with the observers. Do, do we have a photo? Now, Excellencies, I think I owe it to my team. They've worked so hard. May I request a special photo for my team and the panel and the two heads of delegations and later on everyone else will join. This is a humble request. So can I call on my team, uh, Ambassador Farah, and others if you can come to join this family photo. Thank you.